Hello, friends. Today, I have taken up a very important topic. That is the bridge course that is being circulated. Uh, many of you are unable to find the source or get the exact PDF on what has to be done in this one month. So the bridge course is being developed by NCRT. It is not by any private agency. It is not by CBSE. It is by NCRT. So if you try to search the CBSC site, you may not get this. So we are basically following the NCRT document that is released. And what is the bridge course is it is basically for class three and six. Now, remember, CBSC said that they will be introducing new books at two levels. One is class three and six. It was supposed to come in ninth also, but the books were not ready. I had made a separate video on that and explained to you about that. Now, here we are talking about the change the syllabus from the old to the new as per NEP 2020. The original textbooks of NCRT has not been released in class three and six yet. This is the month of April. They said it will come out, but it has not yet come out. So it has been postponed to May. Right. So what are we going to do for the next one month? They are calling it the BMP or the bridge month course. Now, what is the bridge month course? I'm going to explain in detail. It's basically for a smooth transition. For People were doing the old syllabus, which was based on road memorization, which was based on mugging up things, which was based on the assessments, which was more of writing in nature. Now, we have an activity-based curriculum that is being replaced. You know that the NEP is more of activity-based, multidisciplinary approach, experiential learning, art-integrated learning is all the focus of the NEP. And that's why these books are going to focus on that. And the Bridgman program, if you've seen, is already on that pattern. So we have to make our students comfortable in understanding what the new curriculum is all about, make it more interactive, playful, so that they are comfortable when the new NCRT books are released next month, uh, in hopefully in May, or otherwise most of the schools are having summer vacation. Definitely when the schools are reopening in July, uh, you will get access to these new books. So why is the bridge course important? Uh, that part I'm going to explain. So the NCF, National Curriculum Framework, uh, which was uh, explained also in detail, uh, said that there is a need to introduce new books because the books that we are doing right now is uh, being used for a long time, um, more than decades. And it is high time that we change it to new pattern and uh, new methodology of study has to be introduced. And therefore, we have introduced in this uh, two or three main things which were not there earlier. That is vocational education, art education and physical education and well-being. You are uh, now talking in terms of the 10 subjects. We were talking about 10 subjects, right? And the three language policy. So that we are able to see from class six level. So in class six levels uh, earlier where there used to be English, there used to be Hindi and there used to be a third language, right? And then social studies, mathematics, science, all those are there. But what in addition to that we are seeing is that we are going to introduce new subjects like vocational education, art education, and physical education and well-being. So total, there will be 10 subjects. So while the textbooks are to be launched, now this bridge month program, in uh, now on we will be using this term that is we, they have used, not me, the NCRT is using this uh, BMP program, that is the basic uh, bridge month program for class six. And there is also a similar program uh, which is launched in class three because they're also getting new textbooks which is uh, which I'm going to talk about uh, after this. Now, please remember there are a lot of other private publishers who are, you know, just bringing out bridge courses for 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th. Remember, these are not proposed by the CBC nor brought about by NCRT. Why they are bringing it out, God only knows. Why is many schools adapting those bridge? That is up to you. It is not mandatory to follow those. They are only trying to follow what they have done in three and six. So what mandatorily has to be done as per the CBSE protocol, as per the NCRT notification is only the bridge course, which is introduced in three and six. Now, many teachers and students are wondering why bridge courses for nine, 10, 11, 12th or any other classes, not except for three and six are being introduced. That is still a mystery to me as well. It can be used for, you know, upgrading uh, students who are weak, and bringing in them at par with the present syllabus of the revised syllabus uh, that has already been released. Most of the classes are just following the same syllabus as last year. There is no change. 
So the bridge courses have to be done only in three and six because they are new textbooks. And obviously, for a change from the old to new will take time. And that is why the curriculum pattern, the teaching methodology, the teaching pedagogy, assessment patterns are going to change. And that is why the bridge month program is being. So one month, uh, roughly, we will be using uh, month of April and probably a little bit of May. And then some of the schools in North are going for summer vacation. So most probably the bridge course will go on till that time. And when you come back in July, definitely uh, the new books are going to be released. So what are we going to do here? The council, this is, uh, I'm quoting the what the NCRD council member has said, that in 25 and 26 and 26, 27, new syllabus and textbooks will be introduced for the other grades. So this year they have brought about only three and six. Right. One they had already brought about. So three and six now this year they are bringing and the other classes are the same rationalized content we are following. And subsequently, that means next year, uh, uh, new books of uh, 20 uh, in 25, 26, new books of class seven will come. And in 26, uh, 27, new books of class eight will come. So it's going to be a small transitional effect, not that all the books are going to be, you know, changed in one go. So it is it, the process is going to take some time. But it's important that we understand that where bridge month co courses have to be introduced, not at all levels, but only at three and six. So the NCRT states, again, I'm quoting the NCRT council members uh, statement as given. That is the students transition from grade two to three and from grade five to six must be smooth. So they don't want anybody to, you know, react to a new curriculum all of a sudden because they were not prepared for it. So we are preparing a road, a smooth transition, basically from the old to new. Otherwise, what is going to happen is that children will not understand suddenly uh, why this system is being followed. Parents will object, you know, and the teachers themselves have to be prepared for the new methodology in which we are going to teach the students. So that is why the importance of the bridge course is uh, highlighted in this document. So why is it being called a bridge month? Now, the bridge, what does it do? It connects, right? A bridge, the purpose of a bridge is to connect. So if there is no bridge, there is no connection. So basically, that's why they are called a bridge course because uh, the course that is developed for this one month program is basically acting like a bridge between the old and the new so that teachers, students and parents are comfortable when the new books come. And uh, therefore, the subjects are going to be interconnected. That is what NDP is talking about. And therefore, it is important for the teachers to introduce these uh, very methodically and uh, the exposure to learning in a manner that they can enjoy. So, you know, there is a lot of uh, toy pedagogy. There is storytelling method, interactive learning methods, observation method. So that is why all this has to be introduced in a fund-based manner. And if you go through the... Uh, bridge course uh, that has been introduced for every subject and I will show you how to download that if you haven't got access to it still. So you can download this and very, very interesting activities are designed in all the subjects. So let me talk about classics curriculum first. So the classics is basically the from primary, the students are coming to the senior school, right? From So it is basically middle school we call 678. And here we are going to introduce them to physics, chemistry, bio. Earlier they were, you know, learning probably as one, science. So now they are going to in, uh, go deeper into science. And also the languages become more organized. Mathematics becomes more uh, practical in approach. And as I said, new subjects, art education, vocational education, which was the need of the art, uh, how they are going to, you know, uh, work with their hands, basically create stuff. Uh, you know, and bagless days and all are part of vocational education, physical education and well-being, again, very important. Most of the kids are into gaming and other stuff, indoor games, but a lack of outdoor games is affecting their health in a big way. A lack of exposure to the sun is causing vitamin D problems in many uh, kids nowadays. Uh, obesity is a problem. Nutritional deficiencies is a problem. So I think this is a very good course. Uh, physical education was there, but they have added physical education and well-being, which also talks about nutrition, first aid, and also overall well-being of the human body. How to take care of it? What are the essential essentials that the body needs? The rest, sleep, uh, and exercises, yoga, all this will come as part of well-being. I think it's a very beautiful booklet if you have seen. And also I will be seeing you, as I promised uh, before the session. 
And obviously, for all this too, you will have to make a new timetable for it. And uh, they are saying that art education, physical education will be of 100 hours each in every academic year. So it's not a joke. It's not that you are doing once a month or once a week. 100 hours, it's quite solid. Uh, we have to devote. So 100 hours means roughly if we are, uh, uh, let's say we have to put about uh, eight to nine hours at least per week per subject, then only we are going to reach that 100 hours. So every month we can have a plan uh, because some of the months are going to have holidays. So accordingly, if you have classes twice a week, uh, then only you may be able to reach this 100 hour target. And vocational education, they have given even more weightage, 110 hours. I think that's a very good move. And we have to shift from this core, uh, you know, the memorization which happened over a period of time to uh, a course which is useful, a course which can be applicable to our daily lives. So 110 hours is fully justified. I think that uh, about 10 hours a month uh, or 12 hours a month will be the target that uh, schools will be looking for so that they reach this 110 hours of uh, vocational education. And uh, here the teachers themselves need uh, to undergo certain training or they can invite resource persons, parents, alumni, to uh, enhance this vocational education to the students. And subject-wise pedagogy has been released. Uh, I have gone through most of the uh, guidelines and I've also gone through the subject content which is introduced. I think this is very well made. It's a lot of fun if you're going, trying to do. Maths is filled with puzzles and uh, tricks and vocational education, as I said, it's more, uh, I mean, it's not about the equipment as such, minimal equipment, but, you know, gardening, carpentry, plumbing, electricity, you know, and uh, a lot of crafts. These are things which uh, students need to learn and apply in their daily lives. And even for art, I think there is a lot of techniques that is there. And uh, also uh, song, dances, and they have also tried to incorporate the art and culture of the region. Uh, that's very important. So promotion of the Indian culture in a big way is coming in the new curriculum. Physical education, uh, the syllabus is fantastic. I have gone through the, it's not the normal games that they have prescribed, you know, and they're trying to introduce games of different, different states. Like uh, this is the first time, uh, many of you uh, must be hearing these words first time. So when I heard this, that they're going to include the Andin Goka of Meghalaya, I didn't know what that. So when I found out it's like a game where, you know, two students and there's a stick in between, it's like a tug of war, but in tug of war, you pull the stick, uh, pull the rope here what is happening is that uh, we are pulling a stick a stick is there in between and uh, two students will try to pull it towards each other and whoever is able to do that will win then we have another uh, uh, activity which is suggested there ub lap p this is only a few i have suggested now uh, from the ncrt manual of course uh, ub lap p of manipur where you know they take uh, a coconut Basically, and it has to be oiled up and they have to put it under their arms and run. It's like something like rugby. You know, if you've seen, you have to take the ball and cross the line. And uh, you are, here you are taking a coconut, making use of things which are already available. And it is put of oil. So what happens is that it slips from the body and you have to cross the line. And the other team obviously will try to prevent that person from crossing the line. So like that, a lot of games are introduced which involves catching, throwing, running, show of strength, coordination, body movements, right? And then there is this uh, tangled door or the three-legged race and uh, this gadamar, marampati. These are all different, different games. And if you read through, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, this can be a session in itself because they've introduced so many indigenous games, so many games from the states. Uh, and I think uh, children are going to enjoy it. Definitely classic students will enjoy this because these are games probably they have never played in their lives and uh, or probably they have played but you know and uh, uh, they have not really understood the rules or they probably um, they were not guided into this so they must have played it once but uh, when we are doing it on a regular basis I think these games is not only going to promote uh, the interest in the games um, also the states that we are looking for uh, because many of these states are ignored in the mainstream. So when you are taking up games from Meghalaya or Manipur, I think it's uh, we also learn about their culture. And I think uh, that's also a way of bringing in about national integration. 
in vocational education, uh, what is happening is, as I said, work of the hands, minimal equipment to be used. And uh, it could be clay modeling. It could be something based on craft and something learning some new techniques, paper folding, origami. Uh, and as I said, uh, calling experts from outside to learn new techniques, which can be used in daily lives. So internships can be organized. There are many companies now which are organizing internships. This was a Western culture. I think that's a good move that uh, in India also we are starting internships because uh, in India till they turn 18, the children were not supposed to work, right? And the rule is that it, uh, they're not supposed to work in hard labor. But there's no uh, restriction in which they go to a company and learn certain things, how things function. It will help them to make better choices in their career. It will help them to relate to others. It will help them to uh, take up leadership positions later on in life. Field trips uh, to different science places, to museums. These are all were already done, but they are going to encourage this more. And uh, simulations of work environment. Many people are you know, going to become engineers, doctors, but they don't know the reality. So the reality can only be understood if we create a, a simulation of the work environment. People who are actually working there should be called and uh, we could have talks about the pros and cons of choosing a profession. And uh, one day programs can be arranged, you know, where that kind of work culture is emulated in that simulated environment. So this is what is important for us. So the students will obviously create a portfolio of all these activities. And uh, at the end of the year, this record will be there and uh, uh, the students can showcase their skills, talents and capabilities through the examples of their work. So different students, depending on their interest, I'm sure will come out with flying colors uh, in sports, in physical education, in art and culture, in music and show all these new things uh, which are introduced by CBSE. And this is only in six, remember. And as it progresses next year, you can imagine what a beautiful system it's going to create. So right now it's only a flower. Uh, it's going to become a bouquet once we reach up to class 12 level. So the starting, I think, is good. And the bridge course is uh, providing this start. So... Uh, the grading for the bridgeman, there should be no test. They have said that, uh, you know, avoid the stress of a test right now. So what is important is that it has to be done only through observation. So it is the teachers just need to observe, let them play, let them be free. And uh, you just have to observe them, how they are playing, how they are interacting, what type of roles they are assuming, and then maintain the records based on that leadership or how they participated. So the <clears throat> assessment must focus not on the written test, but on the process of doing, uh, not as an assessment, uh, as an end product, which was the normal uh, practice in the earlier years. And in other subjects, these are the vocational, I'm talking about the vocational, the physical and the art education. In other subjects, of course, the uh, assessments need to be continuous for social science and maths and all that. Uh, that has to be obviously on a different level as compared to what I've been talking so far. So here, when we talk about social science or when we talk about uh, maths or sciences, then obviously uh, it has to be based on facts. <clears throat> there has to be a formal test and examination for these subjects as in the uh, previous years. Okay, so there has to be information given, there has to be mind maps, there have to be formula charts. All that cannot be replaced all of a sudden. Of course, a large part of that is replaced with the activities and the games and the role plays. But all of it cannot be replaced all of a sudden. There has to be certain elements of formal education still in our system. And they have kept it that way uh, with our main subjects. right? So uh, that is basically what the bridge course is all about. I think you got an idea of uh, how to go about it. And um, I'm just now going to tell you on the basis of uh, what the NCRT book suggests, like in um, social science, they have said that exploring globe, you know, the wall maps, identifying and locating continents and oceans, mock parliament can be uh, conducted at the school level or familiarizing students with uh, responsibilities of a gram panchayat or municipality that could be a role play or a drama through which all this can be explained. 
So I think more or less it's clear. And uh, now I'm going to show you how to uh, get these documents. Now I've talked about why the bridge course is important and what the bridge course is about. But in case you don't have access to uh, the bridge course material, now I'll tell you how to download it and how to use it, right? So let me uh, just take you to the website. So now this is, I'm going to show you how to download these booklets, the bridge course. So what you need to do is type in ncrt.nic.in, right? That's our website, ncrt.in. And here we will specify uh, class six and ncrt.nic.in class six. Of course, if you want to download any other books from one to 12, that first link, textbook PDF you will get from here. But right now I'm showing you the bridge course material. So I will scroll down to NCRT Yeah, this site, NCRT here, we have ncrt.nic.in. Here you will have important documents, UPAN. This is our two-week foundation for foundation course for grade three. So those who are in primary and want the grade three bridge course, you can get from here. And also teachers who are teaching class six will get the material from here. So when I click on this ncrt.nic, I'm going to get the page, the home page. And what I need to do is scroll down to the notification part. And when I go to the notification part, I will get the first important document, UPAN, UPAAN, two-week foundation program for grade three. So when I click on this, you will be able to get the two-week foundation program guidelines for grade three, right? So those who are in the primary uh, classes will be able to get this document. And this document can be read by the teachers and implementation can happen. OK, so these are the contents here. First grade of preparatory stage, the world around us, art education, physical education and well-being. OK, so this is a two week program and what has to be done, uh, all the activities of puppets and, you know, the paper folding activities. And here we have some conversation, talking time and so on. So you can go through that. It's self-explanatory. So I just wanted to show you that this is available because many are um, asking where, from where do we get it? So this is the site and this is the, the BMP program from Gitson. This is the guidelines, Sanskrit, art education, English, science, Urdu, Hindi, maths, physical education, vocational education, social science, everything is available. So if I click on, let's say English, I'm going to get the PDF bridge month program of what are we supposed to do in the English the entire thing is going to be downloaded. See here, this is R2 English. You will get all this, the timetable that you are supposed to make, the week timetable, and for the whole month, what is supposed to be done. So here we have passages, then we have questions based on that and so on. So like this, we have for everything, like all the subjects, maths. Now let me show you physical education because this is quite interesting. This is the program, bridge month course for physical education is there. Now, this is what I was talking. They have introduced the new games from different, different states. So if you look at the first activity, okay, this is an activity. This is hopscotch here. And they have also said, why is this used? This is for strength, muscular strength, passing the ball, okay, cockfighting, now here, this is what I was telling, and in Goka of Meghalaya. They have explained, even if you don't know how to play it, they have explained that, how to do it. And here, this is what UB Lakpi of Manipur, right? All this is explained to us in the document. So this is what different, different uh, PDF will give you, explain to you everything. Now, this is for the vocational education. Again, something new. So what are we supposed to do in vocational education? The introduction and <clears throat> everything is explained here. Those who are 
having any confusion can go through this. What is the objectives? The timetable that you need to prepare for this that is given there. And later on, when we go this, the assessment, as I said, by observation or method and uh, by doing method. So here, uh, the annexure is given about what all games can be introduced and so on, right? Here, the annexure is there. Uh, teamwork, collaboration, what are the aims? All this is there. Okay, so what are the strategies? I'm not explaining everything because it's quite uh, self-explanatory when you download the books. So this is what uh, I wanted to, everything is given uh, on the website. And I think it is going to be very clear once you download this. This is for class three and this for all the subjects, class six. So on this note, I want to thank you all. And I hope uh, the bridge course program, which was creating a confusion in many of you, is now uh, totally clear to you. So on this note, have a nice day and hope uh, we are going to have a very good curriculum in the coming years so that our students enjoy the course and we also enjoy teaching that course. Thank you.